seven a response from the UCC on the Great Appeals policy setback that we uh, dealt with. Okay. So with that, uh, also let me say this: uh, that uh, at Alan, at my request and uh, the students' request, we would like to be able to adjourn by three forty-five today. It was at four o'clock at the Sandberg. We're going to have a memorial service uh, to uh, uh, celebrate the life of David Odenberger, the student who uh, tragically died last week. Uh, and uh, so we beg your indulgence on that. Indulgence on that. If we, you know, hopefully we can get through our business. So I just want to remind you of that. We really have to uh, break at 3.45. Now, it's possible that we could turn the chair over to someone else, but my suggestion is let's try to get done at 345 and see where we are with that. Okay? Just to give you a heads up. Alright, so with that, let me call for the adoption of the agenda as amended with the three walk-ins. Second? Okay, second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Alright. Uh, you have distributed electronically uh, the minutes of October 10th, 2012 uh, are now uh, for your approval. Any additions or corrections? Hearing that, I'll call for a motion of approval. Move for approval, Monroe. Okay. Second? Second. Alright. Uh, those in favor of approving the minutes of October 10th, please say aye. Since we met last time, uh, you know that I have indicated that this will be our last year's president, and I announced that to the State of the University, and uh, immediately uh, upon that, and obviously I had informed the trustees, they have begun the process uh, of uh, presidential selection. Uh, my, uh, I have no role in, in that selection process except sell the university and to help with the transition. I'm not part of the process. But I uh, recommended to Alan uh, that we have used this forum uh, every meeting that we have between now and the selection of the new president for Alan to have the uh, opportunity to update you on the status of the search as best he can he has not officially been named yet, but tomorrow at a special meeting of the Board of Trustees, after many meetings to deal with this issue specifically, uh, Alan will be, uh, behaves, will be named or not, be in, uh, the uh, co-chair of the search committee uh, along with uh, Trustee Robert Boy, who actually co-chaired it last time. So he has some knowledge of the process, too. Uh, and uh, the constitutional process of committee selection has moved forward, I understand. So I want to do two things today. Uh, let you know that was my suggestion, and it has been adopted by Alan. And today what we're going to do is we're going to have Terry Blakemore right there, our general counsel, who is the um, chief liaison, whatever, to the search committee and the trustees on the presidential search. Okay, he is the guardian of the process, and then Alan will offer whatever comments he wants to offer, even if he's not official yet. Okay, so I'm going to yield my uh, you know, presidential time on that, because this is a matter, this is the most important thing that the uh, campus will do this year. My role is to make sure it's done in a proper way. So I'm launching it, and then you'll never hear from me again. <coughs> Jerry Blake. Mr. President, members of the council, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to provide a very, very brief update on the Board of Trustee presidential search process. Uh, the president
president in effect has given you that, so I don't have much more to add uh, to it, but I will say the following. One, uh, tomorrow the Board of Trustees will meet. They will meet in special session. Uh, the primary purpose of that session um, will be for the board to once select a executive search firm uh, that will be utilized to assist the search committee, committee and the, ultimately the board of trustees in the recruitment, vetting, and, and um, recommendations to the board um, for a, the next president of Northern Illinois University. Uh, the executive committee of the board of trustees has already vetted four different national search firms, and they will make a recommendation for full board consideration tomorrow. <clears throat> In addition, uh, the board will, um, pursuant to the NIU law, which, which provides the authority for the board to coordinate the search, and the board has the ultimate authority to make the selection or appointment of the next president, uh, they will announce the Presidential Search Advisory Committee it is a committee that is being developed in two different ways. One, the NIU Constitution has specific provisions related to the membership of such a committee. Many of you are more than familiar with, uh, and some of you are part of that process because your colleges have selected you, or the faculty senate has selected you for that committee. Uh, persons were notified today and earlier uh, of the finality of that selection process, board will take that up tomorrow. In addition, the board will have appointments to the Presidential Search Committee, and their appointments include uh, Bob Boyd, who is the Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees. He will serve as Chair of the uh, Presidential Search Advisory Committee, and Dr. Rosenbaum will serve as the Co-Chair. There will be other members appointed by the board uh, that will join those from the faculty for a 28-member committee, unless something happens between now and tomorrow, <clears throat> it'll be 28. And that committee will meet for the first time tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Uh, that, once that meeting is formally adopted by the board uh, and it has its first meeting, then quite frankly, the operations of that committee will be turned over to the chair and co-chair. They will then be responsible for the agenda uh, they will establish a time schedule for the search. The Board of Trustees has indicated that they would like to have a new president in place by July 1 of 2013. We're on a pretty tight time span, and for that reason, I will offer my apologies even beforehand, you know, for persons who receive very little notice about this process. Um, people were notified, the entities were notified of the intent of having a meeting on November 8th, but obviously really getting down to the nitty gritty, specifically the names of who would be serving, as, 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 as takes a little bit, a bit of time. Uh, I don't have very much more to add to that. Uh, the Board of Trustees will adopt a charge which will be presented to the committee, um, and it will basically outline um, the sort of responsibilities of the committee, uh, and quite frankly, some of the obligations, uh, particularly related to confidentiality and process um, of the committee as well. Yeah. Um, well, first I'd like to say that uh, the biggest challenge uh, to the uh, search committee is to uh, find uh, someone who can follow up the uh, fine act of uh, President Peters. Uh, so that's going to be a real challenge. Uh, the other main challenge is getting 28 people together at any given time. <laughs> Uh, regarding the uh, search committee, the, the thing I'd like to point out is that the development of the search committee, although articulated in the Constitution, is really up to the Board of Trustees. They were not obligated to follow uh, what is written in the NIU Constitution, but they chose to do that. And so I think it is very important, and this is a statement of the Board's uh, uh, conviction in the culture of shared governance that have supported a search committee that is uh, really very heavily represented uh, by faculty members. So uh, I think we recognize the uh, weightiness of, of this task. This committee is going to have to come up with some of the university for the foreseeable future. And uh, as we've already learned, there are many uh, financial and other challenges that are facing the university. So we feel the weight of this. 
Students have repeatedly voiced opposition to the changing to the changing of our NIU grading system, whereas the plus minus grading policy would create further boundaries preventing student success, whereas the freedom of professors to either use the plus minus system or use the current system disrupts the grading conformity of the university, whereas this policy would adversely affect students seeking financial aid or postgraduate education by making it more difficult to maintain a high GPA, whereas the university seeks to increase the academic success of students in Vision 20 but a plus-minus system policy would most likely reduce the numbers of 4.0 students and the overall GPA. Therefore, the students of Northern Illinois University represent this and urge the university to discontinue efforts to implement a plus-minus grading system. Uh, I just wanted to introduce that as uh, for the, the body. I know that's going to be coming up again, but just to hear a more formal uh, statement from the student body. But that is all I have for today. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for uh, Mr. Quick? Okay. Thank you, Ross. Thanks to students for taking the initiative to put this memorial uh, on today. Appreciate it on behalf of the university committee. Uh, Andy Small, we have a operating staff council report. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, in respect to the student association and the request, I will be uh, just taking questions on the red report that I provided. If there's any questions, I'll be glad to try and answer them. Questions? Hearing done. Uh, we have a written report only from uh, SBS. Uh, I think Donna is here for Todd. Yeah. Is that, that, this is an upgrade, Donna. That, that's correct. Um, I will also just take questions on the written report and proceed. 
adoption of response from the UCC on the uh, action that the council took sending back for review the great appeal process. Great appeal process. What did I say? Oh, right. It's a grading scale process. Okay. I'm going to turn it over to Al who has monitored this uh, and knows more about it and knows what your options are. UCC met, uh, I think, uh, last Thursday, uh, and uh, we uh, informed them as to what the actions of the University Council were. Uh, the uh, UCC was informed that they had uh, three options. Uh, the uh, three options are articulated in the bylaws. Uh, the option they chose was to send this back to the Council with explanation. The reason given by the University Council for sending it back to the UCC was uh, that uh, they uh, had not uh, adequately taken student input into account in coming to their uh, policy decision. Uh, the UCC felt that this was uh, inaccurate, that they had taken student uh, input into account throughout the process. They were particularly concerned that students uh, did not avail themselves of the uh, representative positions that they have both on APAS and the UCC. Uh, they uh, felt that uh, given the amount of effort that they have put into this, the fact that they have considered student input, and also the fact that they felt that uh, this was really a faculty uh, prerogative, uh, they voted 14 nothing, 14 zero, to send this back to us. The council has to do nothing wants this to become policy, so this is not called for a vote. Uh, the University Council can, if it chooses, veto this policy. In other words, approval is not required, a vote is not required, but the Council has the option of vetoing this policy. If the Council chooses to veto this policy, it will take a vote of two-thirds of all voting members of the University Council uh, in order to do that. And so that is where this stands. If Nothing just becomes policy. Uh, the uh, item is on the floor. Make a motion to the There's a motion.
of the faculty to make decisions regarding curriculum. But in this case, I don't think it's in the best interest of our students to have the plus minus system. I also think that there's going to be confusion because if I remember correctly from our last discussion, we are not going to have parity with our graduate school grading scale and our undergraduate grading scale. It sounds like it's going to be a mess in our classes where we have undergrads and grads together. Um, so I guess I'm going to urge my fellow council members to vote in favor of the veto. So um, with regards to that, graduate council has already passed the plus minus system, so you already have a situation where you have a difference in grading. Uh, it should not be that difficult for faculty members to keep track of the fact that they can give a C minus to a graduate student but not to an undergraduate student. Uh, furthermore, the characterization of this is something that has happened quickly is incorrect. Uh, the data that this disadvantage to students in any way is lacking. The Senate committee that looked at this in great detail, as well as the undergraduate coordinating council, which also looked at this in great detail, was not able to find any evidence that there's a disadvantage to students from the plus minus system. The plus minus system is the broad, by far the dominant system in universities throughout the United States. Uh, this what came back to us from the UCC. They have carefully vetted this. This committee does not act abruptly um, or arbitrarily, I should say. Uh, there was a student member on the UCC that was present. They have six student members. There was one present. That student <coughs> member also voted in favor of the plus minus grading system. As you can see, the vote is 14 to 0. I would argue that to veto this would be to disregard not only the advice of the faculty senate, the faculty at large, but also a group of uh, UCC members and APAS members who have been laboring at this for about two and a half years. Well,
not supposed to be selected by the student uh, association. The student association, if they wanted to have that change, would have to um, make a proposal to change that either in the Constitution or wherever it's articulated. So that is, by design, supposed to represent the students in each of the individual colleges, and that's how those are selected. It's not supposed to be selected by the students. I guess, uh, having 12 years ago, really dug into the shared governance process here, the logic uh, of student representation on these policy-making committees was embedded in the fact that these, it cuts across the academic colleges where the students are studying so that their knowledge that they bring to the committees is embedded in those disciplines and not these representatives from the student government. At least that was my understanding of it, if that's helpful without taking a position on this. So two kinds of representation that are aimed at two different issues. Thank you. My name is Dan Hicho and I'm representing, um, I'm one of the representatives from Student Association. And last time when we all uh, talked about the plus minus uh, policy, I recall that or it was my understanding sure why um, um, why it came back to us uh, without having more student uh, representation in the uh, deciding the policy and then um, I believe that student association this year we have a more much more hours into different student organization or other students and if we believe that we can have better communication with the students or the colleges if we have uh, more time or if we have opportunity to talk with our students so uh, this is my hope that we do not make the decision uh, like right now, and I urge it, like everyone to um, uh, give us more time so that we can talk to the other student representative, representatives from these colleges so that we can have better communication with the, the faculty members or the staff members you know, from the university. Okay, uh, explain to us uh, what, what are we voting on? Voting, uh, a veto, a yes means we're vetoing the recommendation of the UCC administrative yes. policy. We're vetoing the policy. So a yes vote means we're vetoing their action. All right. No vote means that this will become policy. Become policy. All right. So the plus minus grade, if you want plus minus, if you believe that this should not be vetoed, you vote. vote one, you're voting yes if you want to veto this policy. If you vote two, you're voting that you do not want to veto this policy. And what's the decision rule? They, they must get 39 yes votes to veto the policy. This represents two-thirds of the voting members of the University Council, whether or not they're present. Okay, are we ready? So one is yes.
curriculum transformation is uh, at the taking place on a yearly basis. Uh, what happens is that uh, they get a large number of people taking it in one year, and then in the next year, they don't really get the community. So they get 15 or 60 in the first year. In the second year, they'll get uh, three or four. And so for economic reasons, the proposal is that they're going to uh, only offer this every other year, uh, and it's purely uh, an economic Thank you.